So I came across this video of one of my favorite Flat Earth YouTubers, Phuket World, entitled Three Fab Flat Earth Proofs, the first of which being the sunrise. Now, while I would normally respond directly to the video, I find that Nick here doesn't actually say much of anything. So I'm just going to explain the concept of the sunrise and sunset to you and explain how it actually proves that the Earth is not flat. So let's go to the demonstration. This illustrates essentially what you would see on a flat Earth when the sun is moving away from you or towards you, away from the horizon or towards the horizon. Now there's a couple things that I want you to notice. One being that the camera is as close to the surface as I could get it without being below it. And whatever I decided to represent the sun is above the camera at all times, mimicking what we would see from the ground on a flat, relatively even plane. Now I have seen similar demonstrations done by flat earthers, but um, they don't do those two things, which are relatively important if this is to model reality. Now, with that being said, there are several differences between this demo and the outside world, one of which being that there are no mountains or hills here, with the exception of this one piece of laminate that hasn't exactly withstood the test of time. Neither is there any fog or clouds or significant atmospheric effects. Nevertheless, this does illustrate some pretty important concepts. One being that the sun is never going below the horizon. That is, unless it is obstructed by something. But without obstruction, it will not dip down below the horizon. It'll only get farther away. And two being that the angular size changes. What does that mean? Well, it means that within your field of view, or within the view of the camera, the relative size of the sun changes the closer it gets to the horizon, or the further away it gets from you. Now, because of that, you would never see this. You would never see the sun halfway below the horizon. That is, when you are above any and all obstructions, or if the obstructions are just so far away that it's not really significant. So that means you would not see the sun halfway below the horizon when you are, let's say, at sea or on a really high mountain or in an airplane. And, well, we do. Now, Nick of Phuket World, as well as many others before him, claim that the sun comes uh, across the sky and doesn't actually come up from uh, the horizon. And that's simply not true. As we can see, not only in the images that I've just shown you, but also in images of mountains casting shadows on clouds above them, which would not be possible on the flat earth because the sun would never physically be below the clouds. Now, that being said, flat earthers do have objections to those, and that warrants its own video entirely. But bringing it back to the concept of the sunrise, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the objections that flat earthers have to all that I've just said, because they have heard that before, and they do have objections. I'm sure I'm not covering all of the objections, but here are the ones that I came across. The first one being to just zoom in. We can see this because when you zoom in, it is not actually being cut off by the earth. It is simply going beyond the clouds, just as we can see here. But of course, with greater distance, those clouds have become smaller and smaller as in angular size, and they just become part of the horizon. So Now, after hearing that, I have to wonder if Nick here has ever actually seen a sunrise or a sunset. I'm glad he brings up the concept of angular size, because at least he, he understands the concept, even if he can't quite seem to understand that that's not what we observe. We don't observe a change in angular size at all, where it should change angular size tremendously at sunset 
and sunrise. It should be fading away into the distance. And the same thing goes for stars as well. The stars would change shape and size, and constellations will change shape and size as it moves across a flat Earth sky. But that's not what we observe, as you can see here. Though I guess I should mention glare. Because if you were to look at this video, you might start to think that, oh, it does change size. Look at that difference. But if you look earlier in the video, you'll see that that is a glare. Because if you didn't know, the sun is pretty fucking bright. So much so that it's really difficult to get it on camera. And cameras pick up glares when, you, when, they, when they have bright lights. You have to adjust for that. You have to really find the actual shape of the sun when there's a glare. And I'm sure you'll be shocked to hear that another one of their objections is perspective. Uh, from our perspective, looking at a very distant sun and distant horizon, then, then of course the sun does appear to just rise up from, uh, from the earth, and this could give us the impression that uh, it's the earth that's moving or rotating to, to allow the sun to come up. But in fact, all that's happening is, is a more, uh, a longer distant version of what we see happening here is, is a, a higher sun than the clouds. And of course, eventually the, the sun comes into view and continues to go across the earth. Except, no, perspective is exactly what I've been trying to explain this entire video. Perspective would cause the sunrise and sunset to be drastically different than what we actually see. It seems as if Flat Earthers are really trying so hard to explain their model of the world without really trying that hard to prove their model of the world, as if them explaining it is enough for us to just latch on to them and believe them without really going off and doing our own quality observations and research. And yes, the sun actually does go down below the horizon physically. Yes, truly. Yes. Uh, believe me. Yes, it does. And another objection that I've heard, <sighs> this one, ooh, atmospheric refraction. Since the densest air is right above the Earth's surface, it goes to say that as the sun moves away from the observer, its rays would have to pass through more dense air than it would when it is directly overhead. Therefore, at sunrise and sunset, the light appears dilated with its color modified. While the laws of perspective also cause the sun and moon to appear smaller as they move away from the observer, the final result between these two opposing effects is what we see. Okay, let's assume that that made sense. Let's assume that it does. Why does it only apply to the sun and moon and stars, I suppose, and not to distant cityscapes? Why aren't cityscapes and skylines just as big as they would be if they were like right up on us? Why, why doesn't it apply to anything else than celestial bodies? If the sun is affected by this, then so is everything around it within our field of view. The mountains in the distance, or buildings, or whatever, that would all be affected as well. It would physically move the horizon below the sun. It affects the horizon as well. And the sunset and sunrise would be flickering and moving all over the place because, you know, atmospheric density and temperature is not constant throughout the day and not constant throughout all that distance throughout the time that it takes for the sun to go down or up. Not to mention the fact that the sunset and the sunrise would be totally different in the summer versus the winter where sometimes of the year you'll have the air being colder than the ground or water beneath it, and sometimes you'll have the air being warmer than the ground and water beneath it. And that essentially flips what atmospheric refraction does. So it would look totally different. In fact, it would look smaller in one of those. <sighs> Nevertheless, atmospheric refraction would never cause the sun to be halfway 
below the horizon. That's just not how atmospheric refraction works because it would, it would change the position of the horizon as well. So if we have images like this, it's not atmospheric refraction, I can tell you that much. So if you're a flat earther and you think you've got the sunrise and sunset all figured out, I advise you to actually go outside for once and look at it. See for yourself. <sighs> Anyhow, that's going to be it for this video. I apologize if it was short, and I also apologize for missing the last two weeks of uploads. Sorry about that, but uh, my schedule was busy. So if you like being told what to do, then subscribe like this video, watch it a couple more times, and um, see you next video, because cause you're going to watch that one too. But only, only if you listen to people bossing you around.